know more because you mentioned um, uh, Michelet. Yeah. I want to I know more about you know how you approach that. Yeah. So um, so first, I'm going to address the last part of your sentence of how you approach that. So another another thing that I was very, very, you know, uh, that I'm very grateful that I was exposed to early on in Judaism is my Rebbe, Rabbi Moskowitz, and really my yeshiva, um, uh, there's a lot of focus on methodology, uh, on whatever we're doing, you know, methodology of everything. And again, that's why I was attracted to Bruce Lee uh, and his teachings. And, um, and so like, I'm very big into methodology and uh, you will find, let's say for Mishle, you know, I, I, if you search for how to learn Mishle and my name, you'll find, you know, a YouTube share about how to learn Mishle where I go through that. You'll find a written step-by-step -step guide of how to learn Mishle step-by-step. Um, so I do have my own methodology that I developed uh, from my, my Rebbe, but the methodology centers on a commentary which few people are even aware exists, which is Sadi Gaon. And the reason that they don't know it exists is because it is, it was in Arabic, right? And, uh, you know, Kafach translated it. Um, so, it's not so much based on his commentary, even though I do like his commentary, it's based on his Hakdama. So in the beginning of Mishle, you know, uh, I think people who have learned Mishle view it through the lens of Rashi, because that's how many people view things. And Rashi says that Mishle is about Torah and, and, and heresy or a Vodazara, right? Uh, but uh, Sadigon says Mishle is a book about how to maximize pleasure and minimize pain through intelligent decision-making. Okay, that's what he says in the Hagdama. Uh, oh, I also have a, a translation of the Hagdama, a part of the Hagdama on my blog, uh, which you can look at uh, if you search for that. Uh, Sadi Gon, Introduction to Michele. Um, But uh, I guess, I'm going to have to give you links later on or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so, by the way, they're, they're, the, the Gaonim are so ignored. It's, it's I know. so it's sad. Yeah, also, it there's, a, there's a, all, so many great statements by Gaonim that I've showed to people where they talk about like how to understand Midrash. Right. And like, no. oh, yeah. Oh, so I gave, I, if, 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 there's a, if, if, I guess, <laughs> you know, if I had to recommend uh, uh, one of my shirin to you, uh, there's a shear that I gave, uh, I, uh, time, COVID did weird things with time. I think this was two years ago, uh, mm -hmm. called Midrashic Betrayal. And it, I tried to go through all the sources of, go, from the Gaonim, uh, and, and we shown him to show like, all these fundamental methodological mistakes that people make about how they relate to Midrash. Um, but yeah, I, I bemoan that as well. And like people, you, you mentioned the names of like, you know, a lot of the Gonim and people don't even, haven't even heard of them, you know? Um, anyway, so Sadi Gon's approach to Mishle is it's a book of intelligent decision-making with a goal of maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain. Uh, and the great thing about that is anybody will benefit from that. Um, like you can take, you know, I've taught, a lot of kids who were agnostic or atheist in high school and you know they feel very um strongly about their religious teachers right and religious subjects but once they see that i'm teaching them Mishle and that Mishle is about how to make intelligent decisions they know that they can apply that and like they gain benefit from that excuse me and so um so that's really the how i approach every pusik in Mishle is Yes, it's in the framework of Torah. And yes, he does talk about Hashem and mitzvahs and such. But the goal is he's trying to make you into a chacham in decision-making. And every pasuk in the bulk of Mishle, in the main part of Mishle, which is really chapters 10 through the end-ish, through like chapter 29-ish or 30-ish, because the end chapters get to different style. Every pasuk is like focusing on a different area of decision-making in life and showing you this is how the chacham acts and this is how the fool acts. This is how the tzaddik acts. This is how the rasha acts. You know, and the arguments that he makes are not religious arguments, but they're consequence-based arguments. For example, like you ask the average uh, high school kid who's Jewish, why should we not steal? So either they'll say because Hashem said so, or they'll say because it's wrong. What does Shlomo say? Because, you know, if you steal, you're going to get caught. If you steal, you're going to become addicted to stealing, and then you're going to eventually steal from someone who, mm -hmm. like, you know, you push things too far, and then they kill you. You know, if you steal, you're going to become accustomed to lying, and then the lying is going to spread to other areas, and then that's going to be bad for your relationships, you know? So he's giving, you know, he, it, Kohelis is really all about the pursuit of human happiness, and there he's shooting down things that people pursue in life, okay? And initially, he's doing the opposite. He, he's leaving you to pursue whatever you want in life, like, oh, you want Kavod? Great. Go after Kavod, but here's how you did, how to do it as a Chacham. Don't do it like a fool. You know, you want money, you want riches. I'm not going to tell you that riches are, are are not the good thing. You know, here's how to get rich quick or not quick. How you just like get rich long term. You know, do it like a chacham. Don't do it like someone who's like a, a a thief, right? And he just takes whatever you're interested in and he shows you 
how to pursue it through intelligence. And what happens is, um, is that Kohelis and Michelet work together where Michelet makes you into uh, someone who applies Chachma in decision-making. And then Kohelis you, shows you how to apply Chachma to uh, the ultimate goals you seek in life, you know? Mm. Uh, and then you eventually become attached to Chachma per se. And then that's where Shir Shirim comes in, at least according to the Rambam, that Shir Shirim is about Avas Hashem, where you realize that, that Yudias Hashem uh, and Avas Hashem is really the highest state that man can attain and also the most pleasurable state. Uh, but by that time, you're already attached to Chachma. So like, that's how the three books work together. But so there's an order. There's an order you should study it, really? So the way I view it is the there is an order. The order is... is um, a pendulum going back and forth between Michele and Kohelis, uh, and mm -hmm. then the pen, you know, and then and then once you, so to speak, master or internalize those ideas, then Shir Shirim is the uh, is is the final stage. Um, uh, I, th that's a part of my whole spiel on on Kohelis of the. There's certain. I, I I know I told you that we wouldn't get into Kohelis, but like. My understanding of Kohelis is there are certain developmental stages that a person goes through. Yeah, in just the same way that people in psychology talk about developmental stages. This is more of like uh, ethical, psychological, metaphysical stages in your development for seeking happiness. Uh, and the stage that you're going to be on for the long, there's nine stages according to the way I have it. The stage you're going to be on for the longest time is working on Michelet and then constantly like, you know, you, uh, going back and forth between Michelet and Kohelis. Like you, you see that Chachma and Yeris Hashem and Mitzvot is the end. That's the so-called Adam. And then you work on applying it to all the particulars. That's Michelet. And then you apply it, apply, apply it. And then you lose sight of the end. And then you go back to Kohelis, you know, back mm. and forth and back and forth. Wow. Um, it's yeah. like a ba balancing act. It's a balancing act. Yeah. 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 And again, I, th this, you know, every book that I learned, you know, you mentioned Pirkei Avos, you know, you said Pirkei Avos is, you know, uh, you're comparing Stoicism to like a, a, a souped up Pirkei Avos. Pirkei Avos has its own place. You know, I'm currently trying to revisit my theory of Pirkei Avos. You know, like the Ramam says Pirkei Avos is really about, um, is really primarily written for Dayanin, for people who are on a higher level. And you have the Gemara that says, uh, Haiman, I don't know where the Gemara is, I think in Brachos, Haiman Dubai, we have a Chasida, uh, Mili de Avos. You know, if you want to become a Chasid, fulfill the words of Avos. Now, Mishle has a lot of jargon, you know, Chacham Tzadik, Navon, Pesi, Naar, Ksil, Evia, you know, Russia. Chasid only appears like a couple times. Chasid is really the realm of Pirkei Avos in, my, in, in, in the way I learned it. Pirkei Avos is for everybody, but, but in a different way than Mishle. Mishle is really, is truly for everybody. Pirkei Avos has ideas that are relevant to everybody, but it's really training you to be like extremely perfected, you know, uh, like, like Levdim Mishur Sadin, you know. And then Tehillim fits in also from, from a different way, but uh, yeah. So yeah, um, now we're, we're on the subject of Shlomo. We could